You go on, go on. Two shillings, sir. Sixpence, sir. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, sir. Today I want to introduce to you Mr. Phillips of the Commonwealth Savings Bank. Many of you have joined the school bank, and I know that some of you are thinking of making a start. Mr. Phillips has come along to tell you why you should save, and what happens to your money when you put it into the bank. Morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Mr. Phillips. Well, to begin with. How many of you have money to spend each week? I don't mean pounds or even shillings, but just little pieces of money. Sixpences, threepences, even pennies. One threepence or sixpence is very small, isn't it? Too small to do much with. But if you could gather a hundred or two hundred of them, then you could do something worthwhile, couldn't you? Yeah. What the school bank does is to help you to gather all the little pieces of money together until they become a large amount. Now, we don't ask you to save all your money, but a part of it. There are some of you already in the school bank. How many? What are you saving for? A house. A house? That's something big, something good, too. How about you? A fishing rod. And? The shirt. Yes? A bike. The shirt. I'm saving for the shirt, too. Good. Now, all those small pieces of money you save, grow into a large amount. You know that your money mounts up. But there's another thing. The bank looks after your money. It guards it in a safe place for you and pays you money for lending it to the bank. Now, what the bank pays you is called... Interest. Interest, that's right. Now, how can the bank do that? 
Well, supposing we were to take you to a bank, what would you see? Supposing you and you and, and say you were able to go and see what happened to your money. How would you like that? I'd like to go if I'm allowed. So would I. Well, let's see what we can do about it. He didn't say you. Oh, that's all right. Wouldn't you like to come too? Well, what are you going to do? All right. Let's go. That, that wasn't so difficult, was it? Hmm? <laughs> Where's Judith? Oh, there you are. That big building across the street is the savings bank, the main one for the city. It's where many of your mothers and fathers bank their money. Let's go and see what happens to this money. Mind the traffic. It is a pretty big place, isn't it? Here people are banking, the same way you do at school. On this side they are depositing or putting money into the bank. And over there they're taking out some of their money from the bank. These people are withdrawing money to buy things they've been saving for. Six double nine. Seven eight oh, Mr. Jones. When you take money out of the bank, you first write in a withdrawal form the amount of money you want. You write this amount of money in words as well as figures so that no mistakes are made. You sign this form and hand it in with your bank book at the desk. You are then given a piece of paper with a number on it. Your book is sent through a tube to the center of the bank where they check your signature and account. The books come through this machine here. First, your signature is checked, and then your account, to see if it covers the amount of money you are withdrawing. After this, your book and withdrawal form go to the teller the man who pays the money at the counter. He calls your number, and you receive your money and the book. Five double two. Six nine two. Five double three. Five three three. John Brown. Number Name, please. John Brown. How much are you drawing, Mr. Brown? Fourteen pounds. How would you like it, please? Uh, three five, two, two fives, four ones. Yeah. That's the way that a customer can draw out some of his money. Over on this side of the bank, people are paying money into their accounts. We'll go across and see how it's done. Come on, Judy. Come on, Judy. Now, Kenny, when you pay money into the bank, it is taken by the teller and marked in your bank book and in the ledger book, which shows how much money you have in the bank. Then, with money paid in by other people, it is transferred to the strong rooms below for safekeeping. 
Now, that money goes down through the floor. The floor? Yes, the floor. Let's go down and see what happens. Another wall of sticks. <laughs> Here's the echo, Eddie. A long way down, Mr. Phillips. Oh, can you talk too much? It's not bad, is it, Mr. Phillips? I just like to find out things. Yes, that's right, Kenny. Oh, uh, Mr. McLaren, I brought some friends of mine along to see where you keep the money. Do you mind if we come in? You got to an inspection authority? Thank you. All right, that's all right. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Oh, what a lot of money. Yes, there is a lot, isn't there? All made up of little bits of money. This is where the money is kept. A bit like Aladdin's cave, but this one has a 30-ton door. How thick? Oh, so so. Come along. Eddie. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty. No, not mine either, dear. Oh. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, there is a lot. All made up of little bits of money. The money from your school banks comes here and is made safe. And too, the money from the suburban banks. The money in the suburban banks has come from the people living there. They want to save a part of their salaries or wages. It comes from people who own or manage business places, like the shops, restaurants, or picture theatres. And the money banked by the town council where people pay their rates. There are banks in country towns, too, where the farmers and fruit growers bank. There are banks in places so small that there aren't even shops, where the post office and the bank are one, where the man who sorts the mail for the country people is both the postmaster and the manager of the bank. When country people call to collect their mail, they can deposit or withdraw their money just as they do at a city bank. And in country schools, the children bring their money each week for banking, as you do. Even at the Royal Show, there is a bank. Now, money from all these different banks in different places comes here, so you can see how it grows. Now, the bank lends some of this money to people who need it. Now, you save large amounts of money because you want to buy things like books or bicycles. In the same way, many big factories borrow money because they want to buy machines or buildings, so they borrow from the bank. The farmer had to buy his land, his plough, his tractor, his seed, and his harvesters, and sometimes this costs more money than he has, so the bank lends the farmer the money to buy these things. And it lends money to governments and other people to build ships, railways, electric power stations, and bridges. The bank lends money to build huge dams where water is stored for towns, and to irrigate the land to make things grow. And sometimes it lends money to people like your fathers and mothers who want money to build homes. After a time, this money has to be paid back to the bank, and people who borrow money pay interest for its use. 
The bank in turn pays you some of this interest because the money which it lent was your money. Money that you and lots of other people have lent to the bank. As soon as you have a pound in the bank, you are paid interest. So the more pounds you have in the bank, the more interest you earn. The bank, by lending money for worthwhile enterprises, is helping to build up our country. You, in your turn, by saving your money for something worthwhile, are helping in this activity. It means that you will value the things you have bought with your savings, as well as training yourselves to be good citizens. You will think before you spend and will spend wisely. You will be preparing for the day when you will want to buy homes and perhaps a farm or a business. You will have learned to stand on your own feet and to be wise in the way you use your money. That's the way the bank becomes a sort of storehouse. Money is lent out, paid back again, then lent out again. So it goes on. Well, if we leave now, we should be back at school just in time for recess. Well, thank you for having us, Mr. McLaren. Oh, we're glad to have you, Mr. Phillips. All set? Bye, Mr. McLaren. You. Goodbye. Glad to have had you. Goodbye, Mr. McLaren. Right, let's go.